Tuesday of the 18th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Write all the words I have spoken to you in a book. For thus says the Lord, Incurable is your wound, grievous your bruise. There is none to plead your cause, no remedy for your running sore, no healing for you. All your lovers have forgotten you, they do not seek you. I struck you as an enemy would strike, punished you cruelly. Why cry out over your wound? Your pain is without relief. Because of your great guilt, your numerous sins, I have done this to you. Thus says the Lord, See, I will restore the tents of Jacob, his dwellings I will pity. City shall be rebuilt upon hill, and palace restored as it was. From them will resound songs of praise, the laughter of happy men, I will make them not few, but many. They will not be tiny, for I will glorify them. His sons shall be as of old. His assembly before me shall stand firm. I will punish all his oppressors. His leader shall be one of his own, and his rulers shall come from his kin. When I summon him, he shall approach me. How else should one take the deadly risk of approaching me? says the Lord. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord will build up Zion again, and appear in all his glory. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion, and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute, and not despise their prayer. The Lord will build up Zion again, and appear in all his glory. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. The Lord will build up Zion again, and appear in all his glory. The children of your servants shall abide, and their prosperity shall continue in your presence, that the name of the Lord may be declared on Zion, and his praise in Jerusalem, when the peoples gather together, and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. The Lord will build up Zion again, and appear in all his glory. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. After making the crossing, they came to land at Gennesaret. 
When the men of that place recognized him, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought to him all those who were sick and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak. And as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Jeremiah 30, 1 to 2, 12 to 15, and 18 to 22. In the first part of this passage, we hear Jeremiah mourn the difficulties that have come upon the people of Judah. They have been rejected by the Lord because of their sinfulness, and he mourns the suffering that they're enduring. But then in the second part, he speaks about a restoration. Their tents will be restored, there'll be happiness among them, They will not be a few, they'll be many, because God will again be their God, and they will be his people. The source of restoration is the Lord, not any magic formula, but returning to the Lord with one's whole heart and soul. The Gospel is from Matthew 14, 22-26. Jesus is praying on a mountain. Now that's something we see often in Matthew's Gospel. Mountains are very important. And the disciples have gotten into a boat. They're a few miles offshore. And during the fourth watch of the night, the fourth watch of the night would be from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., just before the dawn. Jesus is passing by them, walking on the sea. They think he's a ghost. His response, take courage, do not be afraid. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus commands him, and Peter gets out of the boat and begins walking on the water. But after a short while, he becomes afraid and begins to sink. Now this shows two of the attributes of Peter's character. First of all, he is a bit impetuous, that he jumps before he thinks. And thank God that that's true, because God used that on Pentecost Sunday, when the other disciples are still marveling at the fact that they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter goes out on the porch and converts thousands of people to the faith. He has the courage to do what the others don't. But his faith is not necessarily a long-lasting faith. It becomes weak at times, and it has to be strengthened by the Lord. What does Peter respond? Truly, you are the Son of God. Now, in the Old Testament, Son of God simply meant a hero, possibly a king, a prophet. But the way it's used in the New Testament makes clear that it's coming closer and closer to that idea of the only begotten Son of God. And may God bless us.